In this video, I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know about testicular cancer and different types of testicular tumors. If you like my channel or you like this video, please smash that like button and share this video across social media with all of your friends. Now, when it comes to testicular cancer, the first thing I think that's helpful is to establish a way to categorize these different types of cancers, because honestly, there's a lot. And we should do that in three different categories. So there are germ cell tumors shown in red, non-germ cell tumors shown in blue, and then one type of secondary tumor, which will be shown in green. And for your studying pleasure, obviously I've color coded this for you, but as you can see that the germ cell tumors really take up most of the brain space that we're gonna require for you to memorize these different types of testicular cancer. And then there are two non-germ cell tumors and then secondary tumor, there's really just one. So if you're cramped for brain space and you're gonna come out of this video of knowing anything, you wanna spend a lot of time in the germ cell category. And we'll go through these one at a time. We'll talk about the histopathology that you see in all of these different types of testicular cancers. And then what are the high yield associations that will show up on step one or level one that you're gonna to have to know. So let's start with the seminoma. We're gonna just work our way through starting with that red germ cell tumor category. When it comes to seminomas, the histopathology that you're going to see is clear slash watery cytoplasm with a central nucleus. And that is said to have a fried egg appearance, which I'll show you in just a second. You also see what's known as fibrous septae. So when you're taking your exam, if they give you any of these descriptions or they give you an image that looks like this, we're talking about a seminoma. Now, I don't necessarily think that these look like fried eggs, but I guess if you were to zoom in, maybe it looks like a fried egg. I, I don't know, but that's the description that they give you. So if you see fried egg, just stop and pick seminoma. Now, seminomas you do want to know are the most common testicular tumor. And if they give you any laboratory abnormalities, they could tell you that there's an increased placental ALP. But usually if they're going after seminoma, they're going to give you some type of histopathological description. So again, fried egg, uh, watery cytoplasm with central nuclei, or fibrous septae. Now as far as the mnemonic goes here, you really have two options. One is that this is called a seminoma, and it is a quote fried egg appearance. And that's really what you want to take out of this. So the mnemonics have to do with coming up with a way to memorize the fried egg appearance. And if you look at this and you pronounce this as seminoma, one could say that you might see some eggs in semen, right? Semenoma, seminoma, a bunch of little eggs. The other option here is that if you look at seminoma, it reminds me of Seminole. And if you look at the logo for the Florida State Seminoles, it kind of looks like a fried egg. Or it looks just as much like a fried egg as the actual image of this slide, this cancer slide, looks like a fried egg. So if you're going to tell me that, Going back a few slides, if you're going to tell me that this is a fried egg, then I'm going to tell you that this logo, this sports team logo, is also a fried egg. So when it comes to seminoma, you can either memorize semenoma, right, there's eggs in semen, um, or you could memorize seminal, sounding like seminoma, and then that kind of looks circular like a fried egg. Bottom line here is you got to know that seminoma equals fried egg appearance. So let's, let's do our best to memorize that because that's what you want to know. Now, when it comes to the embryonal carcinoma, the histopathology with this one is that you'll see premature cells that look glandular or papillary. And if you see any evidence of hemorrhage or necrosis, you're going to want to pick embryonal carcinoma. As far as the associations go, this tends to be one of the more painful testicular malignancies. And you could see increased levels of AFP or beta HCG. Now, what's important to know here is a couple things. One, glandular slash papillary. If you see those words, the answer is embryonal, but more so the hemorrhage and necrosis piece. And the way that I always memorized that, my mnemonic was I looked at embryonal carcinoma and I memorized the ember part because ember is that sort of like flaming little spark element of fire. And hemorrhage and necrosis, I always thought of something like fiery and dark, like an ember. And if you look at the actual image of this type of testicular cancer, you can see that compared to the one we've looked at and compared to the ones that we'll look at in the remainder of this video, it is kind of darker and I'm going to use the word fiery, but you know, it has that element that kind of looks dark in, in some way. So embryonal has ember in the name, which always reminded me that ember equals hemorrhage and necrosis. It's dark and fiery and bloody. So that's embryonal carcinoma. 
Moving right along, we've got Teratoma. I think everybody's pretty comfortable with what a Teratoma looks like on exams. Just remember that this is comprised of uh, different tissues from various germinal layers. So you're going to see an image of a Teratoma. It's going to be this tumor that looks like it came out of a movie because it's going to have teeth and hair and basically all these different germinal layer tissues just rolled into one testicular tumor. And you can associate this with uh, being more often found in children. But no, no mnemonic here. Everybody, I think, for the most part, is comfortable with what a teratoma looks like. Some people memorize the mnemonic terror toma, like T-E-R-R-O-R -R -R, toma, terror, because the tumors themselves look so scary. Moving right along, now we've, we'll talk about choriocarcinoma. Choriocarcinomas are actually comprised of syncytiotrophoblasts and cytotrophoblasts, and what you'll see under the microscope are multinucleated giant cells. Now, the associations here are a couple things, and these are actually incredibly high yield and the most important thing to pull out of this slide. Choriocarcinoma is associated with gynecomastia, and the lab abnormality is that there's markedly increased levels of HCG. And because of that, you also can see hyperthyroidism. And the reason here, which is pretty important to know for tests, is that one of the subunits on HCG, specifically the alpha subunit, looks a lot like TSH. So when the body sees markedly elevated levels of HCG, it's kind of misreading that for markedly increased levels of TSH because they're so similar. And because of that, the body actually can undergo hyperthyroidism since it's responding to something it thinks is TSH, but it's actually just a lookalike. It's just HCG. So you need to you need to memorize gynecomastia, and more importantly, you need to memorize hyperthyroidism when it comes to choriocarcinoma. And I'll give you a mnemonic for that in just a second. Here's an image of what you'll see with choriocarcinoma. Again, focusing um, on the histopathology, you just want to memorize multinucleated giant cells. But the big thing that you need to take away from choriocarcinoma is gynecomastia and hyperthyroidism due to that HCG looking like TSH. So again, hyperthyroidism and gynecomastia, very important because that's what's going to show up in the clinical vignette that's going to tip you off if the test writer is going after choriocarcinoma. So my mnemonic here is that when you look at the name choriocarcinoma, you want to look at choriocarcinoma, choreo, core, reocarcinoma. And I use that because I think gynecomastia and hypocorthyroidism. So instead of saying gynecomastia and hyperthyroidism, I say gynecomastia and hypocorthyroidism for choreocarcinoma. So you see laboratory abnormalities with thyroid levels on your exam, and then the test question pivots in the direction of sounding like it has something to do with a testicle, you're picking choreocarcinoma. Now let's talk about yolk sac tumors. So yolk sac tumors, the very high yield finding here is Schiller-Duval bodies. Um, grossly, these look yellow and mucinous, but you want to be on the lookout for those Schiller-Duval bodies, which are said to be glomerular in their appearance. So the tumor, the, the histology, it's going to look like you're looking at a kidney, but it's actually not a kidney. It's just a Schiller-Duval body. And you can see that here. I circled it in green for you. Very, very high yield, Schiller-Duval body. And the way that I always memorize this, it's really stupid, to be honest, but I always just said Schiller sack. Schiller sack reminded me of Schiller from Schiller Duval and sack from yolk sack, so the Schiller sack. And when I looked at when I got an image like this, I was like, oh, it's a Schiller sack. And then all of the people studying around me were like, what the heck are you talking about? I'm like, look, it's a Schiller sack. I'm telling you, here it is. Looks like a kidney, looks like a glomerulus, but it's a Schiller sack, which of course is scientifically incorrect, but I got the test question correct, and hey, that's all that matters. Other associations here for the yolk sac tumor, you want to know that these are found in children, and if they give you lab abnormalities, look for increased levels of AFP. The last germ cell tumor, and it's kind of stupid, is a mixed germ cell tumor. And just as the name implies, this is just a bunch of features of different types of germ cell tumors. So for that reason, it's probably not going to show up in your exam because the only thing you need to know is it's a germ cell tumor and it has mixed features. So it can have features of all the things we just talked about. So kind of dumb. Yeah, but that's why it won't show up on your exams. So at this point in the video, we've now gone through the major category of testicular tumors. And specifically, we went through the germ cell tumors. And if you're cool with what I've talked about so far, you're in excellent shape because as you, as you can see, from looking at this overview slide, we really just got three cancers left to talk about. So now let's pivot and talk about the non-germ cell tumors 
starting with the Leydig cell tumor. The very high yield association here is to know that you're gonna see Reinke crystals, Reinke crystals. And Reinke crystals look like this. They are rod-like cytoplasmic inclusions. So you see there's these things in here that look like rods. They almost look like little crystals as the name implies. Those are Reinke crystals. As far as these associations, just know that light egg cell tumors can cause precocious puberty or gynecomastia, and that's due to their basically secreting testosterone, estrogen, etc. But the highest yield thing to take out of this slide is that if they give you something that looks like a crystal, or they say crystal, or they say rod-like, blah, 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 they're describing the crystal, that's a light egg cell tumor. So the question is, what's my mnemonic to help you memorize this? Well, when I think about Reinke crystals, I think about somebody digging to find some crystals underground. So you lay dig for crystals, All right? Here's a guy digging for crystals. Super easy mnemonic. I mean, this got, this got me so many points back in the day. It's so easy, guys. Lay dig cell tumor, you dig for the Reinke crystals. Boom, done. The other type of non-germ cell tumor that you need to know is the Sertoli cell tumor. And the great news here is that there's really nothing you need to know about this. As the name implies, this the histology here, you're going to see Sertoli cells. And recall from embryology that the Sertoli cells are the ones that secrete Mullerian inhibitory factor, which suppress the paramesonephric ducts from migrating and from forming. So there's really nothing high yield to know here. Um, other than it's comprised of Sertoli cells. And the name tells you that. So if you see a Sertoli cell, it's a Sertoli cell tumor. So that's it. And that's all of the non-germ cell tumors. As far as the secondary tumors go, you want to know that lymphoma is a, is a potential testicular cancer. But the really high yield thing here, and it's like the only fact you need to memorize, is that this is going to be due to metastasis. So lymphoma doesn't just spontaneously arise in the testicle, as far as I know. This is going to be due to metastasis. So as far as these associations go, you want to know that this is the most common testicular tumor in very old men. So we're talking age 60 and up. And these are due to metastatic lymphoma that goes to the testicles. And because it's metastatic, there's two things that are extensions of this that you need to memorize. One is that it's going to be classified as diffuse large B-cell subtype. So that's a non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And again, also because it's uh, metastatic, it's going to be oftentimes bilateral. So these other tumors will usually be unilateral. But if you see a bilateral testicular tumor, you should really think secondary tumor, specifically testicular lymphoma. And again, that would be due to metastasis of a, of a foreign cancer elsewhere in the body now attacking both testicles. So the mnemonic here to memorize this important information, which again is just that this is metastatic, bilateral, older men, is that if you see testicular tumors that are bilateral, you want to you want to think like, oh my, that's pretty bad. So, oh my for lymph, oh my, lymphoma, lymph, oh my, see what I'm doing there? So when you see it bilateral in, in older men that have cancer elsewhere in the body and now it's in their testicles, you go, oh my, lymph, oh my for lymphoma. So here's a summary chart for your studying pleasure. Again, I've maintained all the color coding that I had at the beginning of the video. You see the associations that you need to know, as well as my mnemonics. Remember seminoma for either seminal or semen, embryonal carcinoma, the ember for that hemorrhagic necrotic feature, um, teratoma, I didn't put it here, but you can think of teratoma, choriocarcinoma for, remember that core, gynecore mastia, hype core thyroidism. Remember your Schiller sac, it looks like a kidney, mixed germ cell, nothing to know, it's stupid. Lay dig cell, you lay dig for Reinke crystals. Sertoli cell, nothing to know, pretty easy. And then lymphoma for, oh my, lymph, oh my. And that's it. So I just flew through this, but as you can see, even though this might look like there's a lot of different testicular tumors and testicular cancers, it's actually not that bad. It's very buzzwordy. The test writer has to give you some clearly defining feature. Otherwise you'd never be able to get these questions correct. So, you know, rewind the video. Watch it again, pretty straightforward. But again, please, if you liked this video, smash that like button and share this with all your friends.